This is uh, from uh, Bloomberg News this morning. The Bush administration is seeking unchecked power from Congress to buy $700 billion in bad mortgage investments from financial companies in what would be an unprecedented government intrusion into the markets. Through this plan, Treasurer Secretary Paulson aims to avert a credit freeze that would bring the financial system and the world's largest economy to a standstill. The bill would presumably prevent courts from reviewing actions taken under its authority. He's asking for a huge amount of power, said Nouriel Rubini, an economist at New York University. He's saying, trust me, I'm going to do the right thing if you give me absolute power and control. This is not a monarchy. The Treasury would also have the discretion after discussions with the Fed to make non-U.S. financial institutions, non-U.S. financial institutions eligible under the program. The plan would raise the ceiling on the national debt and spend as much as the combined annual budgets of the Departments of Defense, Education, and Health and Human Services combined. Paulson is asking for the power to hire asset managers and award contracts to private companies. Most provisions of the proposal should expire after two years, he promised. A failure by the government to support the U.S. financial system could lead to a depression, Senator Charles Schumer said, um, a New York Democrat, by the way. To do nothing is to risk the kind of economic downturn this country hasn't seen in 60 years. Congress, which may pass legislation as soon as September 26th, that's five days from now, five days from now, needs to make sure there are protections built in for taxpayers, said Schumer. Lawmakers should ensure taxpayers who give the money will be put ahead of stockholders, bondholders, and others. No further details on that comment. Here's a, another uh, few tidbits from Glenn Greenwald over at Salon today. This is redistribution of wealth and government takeover of industry on the grandest scale possible. The buzz uh, phrases that have been thrown around for decades to represent all that is evil and bad in the world. That's all this is. It's not an investment by government in any real sense, but just a magical transfer of losses away from those who are responsible for these losses to those who aren't. If there is any pitchfork moment, an episode that understandably would send people into the street in mass outrage, this would be it. Generations of Americans are almost certainly going to be, to be severely burdened in untold ways by the events which are now unfolding. What's probably most amazing, not to me, but evidently to Greenwald, of all of this is the contrast between how gargantuan all of this is and the complete absence or disagreement over what is taking place and all of it being discussed largely in secret. There are no public debates. It's going to be fast-track legislation passed without any kind of public discussion or input whatsoever. It's basically as though the elite class is getting together and discussing this all in whispers, coordinating their views and releasing just enough information to keep the stupid masses content and calm. Can anyone point to any discussion of what the implications are for having the federal government seize control of the largest and most powerful insurance company in the country, as well as virtually the entire mortgage industry in other key swaths of financial services. 
Haven't we all heard these years that national health care was an extremely risky and dangerous undertaking because of what happened because of what happens when the federal government gets too involved in industry? What happened in the last month dwarfs all of that by many magnitudes. I'm sorry, my timer is going off. Probably our time is running out soon too. Other countries are other countries are debating it. The headline in the largest Brazilian newspaper this week was Capitalism, Capitalist Socialism? And articles all week have questioned with alarm whether what the American government is now doing has just radically and permanently altered the world economic system and ushered in some perverse form of socialism where industries are nationalized and massive debt imposed on workers in order to protect the wealthiest classes. If Latin America is shocked at the, at the degree of nationalization and government-mandated uh, transfers of wealth, that is a pretty much compelling reflection of just how extreme and unprecedented all of this is. I don't, uh, and this is Greenwald talking, I don't pretend to know anywhere near enough in terms of either raw information or expertise in order to opine on the necessity or lack thereof of the latest plan in terms of whether the alternatives are worse. What I do know is that, in, that this injustice is so grave and extreme that it defies words. And here are the three key provisions of these plans. Number one, the Treasury Secretary is authorized to buy up $700 billion of any mortgage-related assets so he can transfer that amount of money to any corporations in exchange for their worthless assets to begin with. Number two, the ceiling on the national debt is raised to $11.3 trillion to accommodate this scheme. And best of all, number three, Decisions by the Secretary pursuant to the authority of this Act are non-reviewable and committed to agency discretion and may not be reviewed by any court of law or any other administrative agency. You know what? Now that, we're, well, now that we fully admit it uh, that to being a socialized country, we should nationalize oil and ExxonMobil while we're at it. If we're being forced to acquire worthless assets, I demand that we also be able to require valuable assets to offset the risk. And I'm not joking. 